Hello, I'm Pastor Wayne Carpenter from Christian Church for All Nations. I'm the worship director, and this is our morning devotional. Thank you for joining. Today, we're going to talk about what the Spirit is saying to the churches, more specifically, what He's saying to our church. Before we get started, let's pray. I thank you, Father God, that in your wisdom, you brought the people together that are under this roof and in this ministry, and you will bring more, and I praise you and thank you for that. Help us to receive each and every one as part of the body. We all belong. We're all part of the answer. We're all part of the vision that you set forth for us. We thank you and praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Revelation, this is probably the best way to illustrate this. The Apostle John is talking to the churches, and he says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes... I will give to eat from the tree of life, which in, is in the midst of the paradise of God. He goes to another church. He who has ear, an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. And this continues uh, in Revelation 3. There are more of these and it just says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is actually very important. I think when you look around, and I know when I first came to the Lord, I wanted to know, well, who's really reading out of the Bible? It was very important to me because I didn't want to waste my time with the religious experience I had in the past. I wanted to have the experience of God in my life and the power of God and the living, breathing Holy Spirit in my life. And I wasn't going to find that in the church that I was in. So I had to move on and I started looking around at who's actually doing what it says in the Bible. Well, those are the people doing that are hearing from the Spirit. And that's what we're looking for even in our church today. That we talked yesterday a little bit about a prophet not being accepted in his own, you know, in his own country, and that is certainly seemingly true. But it's we if we know that already, it's wrong for us to even think that each one of us we know each other very well, but that each one of us is not special and precious and has a gift to offer that will bring our church to the place where it will need to be in God. It's just the opposite. God ordained these things so that we would be together and we would accomplish what he set out to do. The thing is, are we really paying attention to what the Spirit is saying to our church? Now, if you go on, uh, the Apostle Paul, there's at least, at least nine books of the New Testament that are dedicated to direct messages to churches. So this is not just scriptural, but it's also a very natural occurrence in the kingdom of God. Preaching is the way that God reaches his people, is through what some translations will say, the foolishness of preaching. And so to the world may look at it and say, well, they're just preaching. But to us, we're hearing from the Lord through the preaching. So this is the spirit of God moving at that time. And so if we're paying attention to that, we will all be hearing the same thing as God delivers the message into our church. And as a church, we receive it. We absolutely must receive it. Absolutely must give God the glory for the occurrences. These are not just things that we think we want or do. If we have a pure heart, then we will want those things that God wants. And we certainly will be following, in a sense, our own desires. But really, our own desires are to follow. God. So there won't be the things that like we just get together and just, you know, we can have fun. That's fine. But when it comes to the spirit of God, we can't all be going our own way. We all have to be focused on what the Holy Spirit is saying. So what exactly is the message to our church at this time? I suppose this could really apply to any church. But let's talk a little bit about specifics here. And the message that Pastor Danielle just delivered on Wednesday night. Certainly she is our lead pastor, and if God is going to speak through anybody, he's certainly going to speak through her through the quote-unquote foolishness of preaching. God is part of every one of our lives in this church. We're all part of the answer, part of 
what God wants to fulfill in the church, but Pastor Daniel is leading. She is setting the pace, setting the tone, and it is up to us to follow and to go where she sees the vision taking us. I can tell you from experience that any person in leadership is under a great deal of pressure, if you will, to go with, if you want to call it the corporate way or if it's a small business, to satisfy customers. They're driven to do that. Well, a lead pastor is driven to satisfy God and to feed the congregation. So if we honor that dedication and the way she will put herself or any lead pastor puts themselves out there and gives the word of God, if we honor that, then God will honor us as we honor them. So here are some things that Pastor Danielle said. Some of it was prayer, some of it was direction, some of it was scripture. Let's go through a few things from Wednesday night. One of the takeaways was is not to repurpose or remanufacture or kind of rethink the past and how we can recreate that today. The past is a glorious thing. A lot of wonderful things have happened at Christian Church for All Nations. But it's the new thing that God is doing is what Pastor Danielle is pointing us towards and talking about. And she goes further on to say, thank God for what is new. That's where we really need to be is thanking God for the new things in our church. And we hope that we see even more new things. There's, there are things happening, and if we acknowledge those things and they become bigger, they become more important, they become the vision of the church as we get on board. We can drag our feet. We could do that. And these things could never happen because we decided they, they would not happen. And like the Israelites, we can go around the mountain and go around the mountain and go around the mountain and one after another drop out until finally a fresh batch of people come comes in ready to go into the promised land. We can do that. It's certainly within God's ability to allow our free will. It's certainly within our ability to not pay attention to what God is saying. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Pastor Daniel went on to say, oftentimes, God is going to stretch us and that he is going to get us out of our comfort zone. <laughs> I think this is a little bit on the prophetic side. Something's coming. She's preparing us. She's saying, look, if you're starting to get out of your comfort zone, that's probably a good thing. She talks about we have a rich legacy here. We have a rich heritage. The move of God that happened before, it was great. A lot of great things have happened, and we can thank God for that. And then she slips into prayer, and she says, God, where do you want to take us? What is it that you have for this house? God, I want to see a fresh move, a fresh fire. Certainly referring to the book that she recommended that we all get. And I think that we should do our best to go get that and follow up on that. This is the direction our pastor's taken us, so let's go. She brought up the scripture, Hebrews 13, 21, because it's human nature to say, well, I don't have the ability, even Moses has said, well, God, send somebody else, please. I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. And God took care of that for Moses, and obviously we all look to Moses uh, for a great deal of inspiration. Well, somebody's looking to you for inspiration. You may not think so, but they are. If you have the Spirit of God in you, somebody is looking at you and saying, hmm, I wonder how things are going to turn out. And yes, they might be on the fence, but you might be the person that God works through to carry them through to the other side, to salvation, to deliverance, whatever it is. So there's this part in human nature that says, well, I can't do anything like that big like God is doing, so uh, I might as well not try at all. Well, Pastor Danielle brings up the scripture in Hebrews 13:21. May he equip you, that is God, with all you need for doing his will. And an emphasis, as she put, on his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. It's not on us to create, if you will, heaven on earth, or to, not on us to be emotional enough exert enough of our own physical or mental powers, will, creativity, 
to accomplish what God wants to do. We will do all those things, but we will do them the way that God has ordained. That's the comfort zone that God wants us in, where we are settled in him and we are trusting him to come through with what we need as we move forward. We have to move forward in faith first. So finally, Pastor Daniel lays down the challenge. Are you willing to be faithful? Are you willing to make yourself available? Certainly, this is always happening at one level or another in our church. But when Pastor Danielle says, are you ready to get out of your comfort zone? That means something bigger is coming. So let's get that book that she recommended. Let's keep listening for more because God will keep speaking the same thing until we are ready to receive it. The sooner, the better. I cannot wait to do all these things that God has in store for us as a church, a Christian church for all nations. I cannot wait to do those things together with you. We have services at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. That's our main service at 11 a.m. on Tuesday morning. It's a traditional service. If you're available on Tuesday morning, it's a wonderful group of people that comes together in a traditional setting. On Wednesday night, we have a short service from 6.30 to 7.30, and that'll be worship and the Word of God as well. So before we go, uh, let's pray. I thank you, God, that all things work together for good and help us as believers to drop any type of pretense, any type of trying to serve you and just simply relax and just serve you and enjoy each other's company, enjoy the fruits of our labors, enjoy the fellowship that we have. We thank you, God, that you don't ask us to perform. You just ask us to have faith and believe, and we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day.